Hello guys and welcome back to a completely new series here on my YouTube channel. My name is Zivol and in this series I am going to show you how you can create your own game in Roblox Studio. I will show you a bit of Lua and explain you some stuff in Roblox Studio to get you started to create your own games in Roblox. So, we are currently on the Roblox homepage. As you all most likely know, you can play games here and pretty much do all that sort of stuff. So. Um, I quickly want to say that you can only create Roblox games on a PC or laptop. You cannot create games on Roblox on a mobile device such as a smartphone or a tablet. And you can also cannot create them on a console. So keep that in mind. Then you want to head over to this create tab here and then you will get to the creator hub. Here you can download studio and see all your experiences and also have all these different things here. You are just going to download Studio. So if you have Studio already installed, it will prompt you to open up Roblox Studio. If not, you can just download it. I'm just going to open it up. Also, if you're interested in making a game like Salt RNG, then you can check out my other series where I explain you in detail how you can create a game like Salt RNG. This is my new game, which is called Zvolt RNG. It is the first link in the video description, so you can also check it out. Uh, this game uses my system, which you can pretty much copy with my series. So if you want to get a preview of what will expect you in this series, you can just check out this game. And yeah, I would be very happy if you give it a try. So just maybe play it and let me know if you want uh, me to update this game further and yeah so back to the video so once we are in roblox studio uh, you will see a bunch of different options here so you can either start a tour or open the tutorials but i think you are already in a tutorial so there's not much point for this so um, you can either create a new place which you can do with base plate classic base plate or flat around or check out any pre-made games, maybe like an Obby, the racing game, or Line Runner, or the Move It Simulator. These games are all pre-made by Roblox or other creators, and you can check them out and maybe learn something from them. But we are just going to create a base plate here. So I will quickly guide you through the UI of Roblox Studio. It's pretty much very easy to do. So in the home tab, you have all the different main stuff, which is the most useful. But yeah, it's basically just all the other tabs pretty much combined. So we can pretty much skip this here because everything will be explained too. So then in model, you can do different stuff with parts. So you can press on parts here or press right click and then insert part to insert a path, but you can also click on path here. So yeah. This will pretty much insert a path for you. And then with this path, you can do different things. So with the select tool, you can select paths. With the move tool, you can move parts on the X axis, the Y and the Z. With the, with any other tool like move scale rotate you can also select other parts with a scale you can scale them and while holding shift they will be scaled in all directions rotate you can rotate them yeah and here you can put which for so for rotate and for move how much you want to rotate and move them so i have currently set a 90 degrees so I not rotate them by 90 degrees. If I set this to 10 degrees, I rotate them by 10 degrees. The same goes for move. I have it at five studs. When I put it at one, I'm moving them one stud each, each time. One stud is the equivalent to one of these blocks. So yeah, that's how you know you move them one stud. So then you can skip transform. You can also skip the edit pivot. The align tool um, here in parts you can insert different things 
So you can insert a block, a sphere, a wedge, a corner wedge, or a cylinder. In the material manager, you have access to all the different materials. Uh, in the color, when you have a part selected, you can press on color, and then you can color the parts instantly. Then you can then you have group, lock, and anchor here. The anchor is the most useful one because anchoring a part makes sure that when you play the game, the part does not fall over but stays in place. So all these different things here are a bit of more advanced, so we will get to them later. Then you have the avatar tab, where you again have all these different move forms, and then you can have the accessory fitting tool. You can create an accessory. You can import a 3D file from Blender, for example, or you can build a rig. So we can build a rig right now. Just press on it. This is very small. I'll have probably have to zoom in on it. So, okay, yeah, this is better. So we can either select R15 or R6. And then we can put my avatar or just a block avatar. And that's how we can create the avatar. We can move it around and move it like this. And we can even scale it. Then we have to test where we can start a server, which will be created with more than one player. You can either play, play here, or run the game. Running the game will just put you in some kind of spectating perspective, I think. So yeah. Then here on device, we can select different devices, maybe like an iPhone 7, and then we, we can see how it would look on an iPhone. We can just also put it to a console maybe and see how this looks. We can just turn this off. Then on view, we can enable different things. The things you need the most is the explorer, the properties, and the output. When you move stuff around here, you see in the middle this thing. So I'm going to just put this on the outer rank right here, and then put this down here. That is usually how it's set up. You have the output here, the explorer, and the properties here. In the explorer, you can see everything in your game like a file manager. You see the different services. So the workspace is everything you see. And the lighting is the atmosphere you see. Every other thing is not able to be seen, except the starter UI. But you will get into this when we have the services introduced. So, and then on plugins, you just have different plugins. But yeah, that's nothing for now. So then we can actually create the first script. So in server script service, like the name said, this is for server scripts. So we can press on the plus button and then insert a script. And every script comes predefined with this text, print hello world. I'm gonna just zoom into this a lot here. And yeah, when we print something, or when we want something, we can see this in the output. So this will be in every Lua script. I'm gonna just put it back to print. Then we have to go through a few different things. So you can create comments by pressing the these things. I I don't know how to oh, is it called exactly. Um, and then you can just write anything in, and this will not affect your script. When I remove them, you'll see this will be unaligned red and it will not work. But yeah, that is how you can create a comment. So then, variables. You can create variables with a local, and then the name, and then equal to, and then you can put it equal to maybe a name like John. Then we can print the name out. So variables that are defined can be used later in the script. 
And then there's a few different things. So functions, maybe have the function local function. And then we can give a name to the function. So let me just make this same name. And then we need a name. So in these brackets of a function, we put what is required for the function. And then we can put this print hello world here. And then in the brackets, we can put the name. Just like this. And then here we can put say name and then the name. So I'm quickly explaining you what this does. So we define the local variable, which is equal to John. And we give it the name name. Just like this. And then we have a function that needs a parameter, uh, a parameter named name. And then it's going to print the name out. Keep in mind, this can also be X or anything you want. It just needs the name. And then we are going to call this function and put in the name. So when we run the game now, you can see that John is getting printed out in the output right here. So that is pretty useful. And that is actually your first script created. Well, actually, your first script created was print hello well. That is your first script created. Now, when you run the game, we can see that hello world got printed out and then John got printed out because script runs from top to bottom. Keep that in mind. So, Roblox actually has a few different data types. So, a Boolean a string, a number, and nil. So, if name is a string, which it is right now, so John is a string because it is in quotation marks, this is a string. We also can put numbers, so maybe 9, then when we run the game, you can see that 9 got printed out. Then we can put a boolean, which is either true or false, or a nil. Keep in mind, nil is not zero. Keep that in mind. And now nil will print it out. So, that is pretty much the first script. We can make this a bit more complicated by putting in an event. So we can put in an event. So let me quickly delete all this here. So an event is when something happens. So we can access everything in the game by putting game. And then it's pretty much like an explorer. So dot, then we can access everything that is in here. Think of it like the game is everything you see here. So we can put game of workspace or game of players and everything like this. And then it's structured like a folder. So when we put game of workspace, the next layer would be camera, terrain, spawn location, rig, base plate, part and part. And we can put dot base plate. And in the base plate, there's a texture. So we can put dot texture. It's just like a folder. So, and when we get an event, so maybe for the players, so game dot players, and then we call an event dot player edit. You can see it's an event when it has this lightning, the purple lightning in front of it. Then it is an event. So we can use this, and then when we want to do a function with it, we can connect a function with it, and then it's going to give us the player. So, and then we can print player. So, when we run the game now, or not run but play the game, you can see that hello world got printed out, and then my username got also printed out. So, this is actually the first script which we have done right now. So, 
let me just quickly put everything together that we have learned in this episode. So this is everything we have learned today. We can print and warn different things in the output. We can make a comment. We can define variables. We can define events. We can call. We can define functions and call functions. And that is the first step of creating a game. So, in the next video, we are going to get over to variables and data types. So, we are going to get more into the numbers, strings, booleans, nil, and also the tables. And I'm going to show you how you can use variables. And we are also going to create an example script in which we can use the different strings and booleans and stuff. So yeah, that was pretty much it for this episode. Um, if you want to learn more about Roblox Studio, then I would tell you to stick onto the series because I'm going to explain everything for complete beginners which haven't even opened Studio once in their lives. So, if you are one of the people who haven't opened Studio once in their lives, this is the right tutorial for them. I will upload each episode maybe like every three days or maybe four days. Um, also, for anyone wondering, the RNG series, which I did, it is continued. I did not stop it. I just took a quick break for it. But yeah, if you want to join my Discord server, you surely can. There's a lot of people in there which can help with code. So if you want to join the Discord server, you surely can. But yeah, that was pretty much it for this episode. Again, um, at the end of the episodes uh, or the uh, series I wanted to say, um, you can learn how you can make such an epic game yourself. If you want to learn how you can create a game one-to-one -one like this, then make sure to check out my other series again. And yeah, see you in the next video.